Hello, my name is Christian Alpen and today I'm going to explain how to use plugins in sensor music you see in Hollyhock. First of all, you have to set the path where the plugins are located on your system. If you are a Mac user, you can take the advantage of skipping this step because Hollyhock's OS X version uses the standard shared plugin folders where all plugins are installed by default. On a Windows machine, you have to go to the setup panel, which can be found on the start page right here or, if you're already on the workspace, down here. In the Setup panel, go to the Plugins tab. There you can set four different folders, so you can specify different locations for VST or Audio Unit plugins. Simply click one folder and select the location where your plugins are located. After that you have the option to rescan all, or if you just edit another folder or another plugin, you can just rescan changes. As you are used from other systems, this might take a little while. It might happen that Hollyhock crashes during the scan process. Never mind, just restart Hollyhock and do one more rescan. This should solve the problem. If you have successfully scanned your plugins, go to the browser and select the Plugins tab. There you'll find a list with your plugin collection. Now we are ready to use the plugins in a project. First of all, I'm gonna pick a sample from the Sounds tab in the browser, so we have some audio to listen to what the plugin does. Simply drag the file to the Patch field in the rack. I'm gonna take a simple sampler this time. Next, we're gonna add a plugin into the rack. Just go back to the plugin browser and simply drag one into the rack. Now a dialog appears where you find three options. Right now we focus on the first one, which gives us basic connections like audio I.O., MIDI in and two basic switches. Now you have the plugin like you're used to it. In the rack you have two remote switches, which simply do what they say. Bypass the plugin and show or hide the plugin window. If you double click the patch to open it, you can see the pre-configured basic connections like the switches visible in the rack, MIDI in and audio I.O. So now the plugin is ready to use. I need a lockpick to open this. I need a lockpick to open this. Pick to open this. Damn. To open Damn. To open Just this. what I need. Just what I, I can use that. More gold for me. Yay. Another, Yay. Gemstone. Another gemstone. I need a lockpick to open this. I need a lockpick to, lock lock to open this. I need a lockpick to open this. Maybe you don't want to see the plugin all the time, but need one parameter in excess. Therefore, you need to make the wanted parameter visible in the plugin module. This can be done by clicking the Show All Parameter button in the plugin window. This can be a little bit confusing if your plugin has lots of parameters. If you want it more clear, you can just move or click the knob of the desired parameter. Next, you just click on the parameter's inlet and drag a wire into the patch space. Releasing the mouse button opens a dialog where you can select the desired control element, for example a knob. Now the feedback can be controlled with a knob in the rack while the plugin is hidden. I need a lockpick to open this. I need a lockpick to open this. Damn. Broke. Damn. Just what I need. 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 As you might have noticed, you can add other controlling data modules like an LFO or a random generator to control parameters in the same way. For example, we use a random module for the dry wet mix and an LFO for depth. If you don't want to use the whole range, right-clicking the module opens an option dialog where you can set the minimum and maximum value. I need a lockpick to open this. I need a lockpick to open this. Damn. Bro. Damn. 
Just what I need. Just what I need. I can use more gold for me. More gold for me. More gold for me. I need a lockpick to open it. I need a lockpick. I need a lockpick to open it. Damn. Damn. Just what I need. Just what I need. Just what I need. More gold for me. Yeah. Yeah. Another gemstone. If you want to use a hardware controller, there is a simple way to map the wanted controller to a certain parameter. On the left side, click the MIDI Learn button. Now all elements which can be controlled are highlighted. Select the desired element, in this case the knob to control the feedback, and touch the controlling element on your hardware, in my case the pitch wheel of a master keyboard. Now when I turn the pitch wheel, the knob starts rotating. Don't worry when the plugin doesn't react at this moment. The remote works properly as soon as the audio engine is turned on. I need a lockpick to open it. I need a lockpick to open it. Damn. Damn. Just what I need. I can use that. I can use that. gold for me. Of course you can even use send effects instead of inserts, for example for reverb. There is a very simple way to create something similar like an auxiliary. Just grab the wanted plugin from the browser and drop it on the workspace. A new rack is created automatically. To send the signal to the effect, just grab the rack and drop it on the input of the effect rack. On the input, you can adjust the send level in the master input. On the output of the rack, you have, as usually, the master effect level. I need a lockpick to open this. I need a lockpick to open this. Damn, broke. Just what I need. I can use that. More gold for me. Yay, another gemstone. I need a lockpick to open this. I need a lockpick to open this. Damn, broke. Just what I need. I can use that. More gold for me. Apart from audio effects, you can use VST instruments as plugins in a similar way. Just select an instrument from the plugin browser and create a new rack as we did before. Now you go to the Devices panel, select the MIDI device where your input comes from and drop it on the input of your rack. This assumes that you have configured MIDI correctly before. If not, you'll find the detailed information in another video. So that's all. Now you just have to turn on the audio engine and start playing.